I dreamed I was standing by a big dead duck in my underwear. That was a clip from the original Mystery Science Theater 3000 premiering in Minneapolis, Minnesota on November 24th, 1988, a young man by the name of Joel Hodgson has inadvertently created a whole new movement of how to watch movies. MST3K exists on a very simple premise. In fact, they explain everything to you in the intro. Tom Servo, Crow T. Robot, and Joel Robinson, as portrayed by Joel Hodgson, would simply watch B movies and commentate over them for our amusement. This range from movies like Manos, The Hands of Fate, to Hobgoblins, to Santa Claus Conquers the Martians. These movies were all panned when they came out, but MST3K brought a brand new cult following to many of them. The most famous of these has to be The Room, a movie made by the eternally enigmatic Tommy Wiseau, a movie so bad that it has spawned a deluge of memes. It was just a little-known cult classic movie playing in a few theaters when Rift Tracks decided to riff it. Rift Tracks features movie riffing by three of the original cast from MST3K, Mike Nelson, Bill Corbett, and Kevin Murphy. Their show's exposure helped them make the room to what it is today. I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. Whoa, oh, mood swing. What's up? I, I have a problem with think? pizza. She said that I hit her. What? Well, did you? No, it's not true. Don't even ask. What's new with you? Running on Comedy Central from 1989 to 1996 and the Sci-Fi Channel from 1997 to 1999, MST3K became famous for taking old, crappy B-movies and making them a fun experience. Everybody do the agitator cycle. <laughs> 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 Everything I touch turns to gold. What happens when you touch gold? <laughs> While any group of friends can group around and poke holes in a movie like Howard the Duck, having it done by these characters who are not only funny, but who have personalities, plot, and connectability yes, makes them a super It's Cowboy Mike's own original red hot ricochet! <laughs> barbecue sauce! <laughs> barbecue sauce? But look what we've got! But Clay, do you think it might be bold? Bold? Well, hell yes, it's bold! As the people watching this may know, my name is Joel. And one of the reasons for that is because my mother loves MST3K so much. Well, I got named after the main character. I even got to meet Joel Hodgson at a convention. I grew up walking into my mom's office and there was just an episode of MST3K playing in the background. There is even a 24-7 Twitch channel that streams old episodes of MST3K that she subscribed to. Kino Reeves on bass. I would go to Count Dracula. <laughs> Joel Hodgson caught lightning in a bottle. He took these pieces of media that no one cared about, that were either in the public domain or he was able to acquire the rights to them, and turned them each into their own interesting and fun viewing experience. He has cited the film Silent Runnings as an influence for the premise of the show, but the rest of it was his love for stand-up comedy, something you can really feel coursing through the veins of the show. And his gift for building little gizmos and puppets, things that would be reflected in the naming of something like the Gizmoplex. Joel hosted over 100 memorable episodes of MST3K before departing the show. He was replaced by Mike Nelson as the host stranded on the satellite of love. Joel did go on to found Cinematic Titanic in 2007, with several members of the cast and crew after MST3K went off the air in 1999. But the fanbase stuck around and did, quote-unquote, keep circulating the tapes. An unbelievable 17 years later, in 2016, Joel would start up a Kickstarter to get the show revived, and boy, did it work. MST3K fans show up. The Kickstarter received over $5.7 million from backers, with an additional $600,000 from add-ons. Now, with Jonah Ray as Jonah Heston, Patton Oswald as Max, or son of TV's Frank, and Felicia Day as Kinga Forrester all on board to host the revival, the show was more alive than ever. It was given a season order on Netflix, and eventually a second Kickstarter raised another $6.5 million to ensure that even more episodes would be made. Hey, everybody.
everybody. This just it. What? We got uh, season 12 on Netflix. Netflix, thank you, Netflix. Uh, In 2021, Joel and the team launched another successful Kickstarter to create season 13 and the Gizmoplex, the MST3K online theater. But wait, there's more. There were MST3K live shows that toured the country. Two of the original MST3K cast members, Trace Beaulieu and Frank Conniff, who played the Mad Scientists, have a popular riffing show called The Mads Are Back, which streams on Dumb Industries. And writer-slash-actor Mary Jo Peel, who played Mad Scientist Pearl Forrester on MST3K, also comments on bad movies on The Mary Jo Peel Show. MST3K was a perfect idea, created and performed by talented writers and actors, but I think it was a lot more than that. The MST3K fandom, called Misties, frequently shared the feeling that MST3K helped them get through a hard time, or even saved them. I think that watching MST3K is like watching a movie with old friends. It's comforting and reassuring, and reminds us that we're not alone. So, if you ever need a little community when watching that bad movie, check out an episode of MST3K for me, would ya? And while innovator Sven Gulli, who, while writing the script, I typoed as the name of an Italian pasta, Spoofed movies and parodied songs starting way back in the 70s, Joel Hodgson took that core concept and ran with it. He created a whole new genre that people would pick up in the years to come. MST3K gave us a cultural touchstone with common references. There are references to MST3K on The Simpsons, Gremlins 2, and even references to specifically Crow and Tom Servo in Archie Comics and The Muppets. The formula of watching people watch a movie has become something so commonplace that tons of YouTubers even do it today. Look at YMS, also known as Your Movie Sucks, who does full commentary tracks on movies like Daredevil or The Fanatic, where others do stuff on the Saw franchise, more modern horror movies, or even older movies geared to kids that just missed the mark that you might have very well never heard of. Things like Watership Down, for example. This is now an insanely popular genre of movie watching as a whole, which is a weird thing to say that there is a meta around watching movies, but there is. If you make a movie so bad that it becomes good, something like The Room or the Sharknado franchise, something where you and your friends laugh at it, it's enhanced tenfold when a bunch of comedians actually add jokes to a movie that is taking itself way too seriously. This means that you can enjoy the schlock that is on screen while also finding a way to find it funny instead of just raw-dogging Howard the Duck. That didn't sound right. Going forward, this means that even if a movie is disastrously bad, there might be a way for the movie to wind up making money. But frankly, I've considered sitting down and writing a script or something and riffing a movie myself, considering that I grew up with Joel Robinson, Crow T. Robot, and Tom Servo shaping my humor from a very young age. Comment down below if that's something that you would want to see. Across the board, Joel and the MST3K team revolutionized how content is enjoyed to this day by creating a community with in-jokes, That's the Patrick Swayze Christmas trivia, an active wiki, a 24-7 Twitch stream, and fans that have lasted since the show's inception. It makes me glad to know that this show is set in the future instead of being made in the future so I can enjoy it in full today. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm off to go decide between watching Attack of the Giant Leeches or Night of the Lepus. I'll see you all next time. Hmm. Leeches or lepus? Leeches, lepus.